Jenkinson is a third year trainee teacher specialising in art at Edge Hill University. She's currently on a placement at Garswood Primary School near St Helens, where Pam Potter is the co-head teacher. The teachers at Garswood are encouraged to be creative in their planning, to work to ensure that the children are experiencing a breadth of opportunities, to develop skills that reach beyond the 2D curriculum and ensure that they embrace opportunities for problem solving, for team building skills, to encourage them to become leaders and learners of the future. Lucy Price is the Year 2 teacher at Garswood and teaches the class Rachel is working with. She discusses with her the teaching Rachel will be carrying out whilst at the school. If we talk about the different areas that you're going to be planning, think about the different um, subject areas that you could include together, and um, we try and get in as many different subjects as possible within the lessons and the children have opportunities to access activities that will cover areas of the curriculum without them knowing really. Um, so we've got some QCA units that we want to follow. We don't need to stick to them rigidly as long as we cover the objectives yeah. that are in there. Do you need to do any external visits as part of your course? Actually I do. As part of one of my courses at Edgeal, um, it's external visits and trips. That includes different curriculum areas and how we can cover those like, objectives actually on that visit. Right. So preferably if we could visit a farm, that would be really useful. Yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about going to the Walker Art Gallery right. because there's a very nice painting there. I think um, that would include all these objectives you know, on the farm. Brilliant, brilliant. I'd really like to take the children out of the classroom and get them involved in an, in an outside learning environment. I really want to get the children involved in how exciting art can be. Kate Simpson is Senior Lecturer in Primary Education and also Leader of the External Visits and Partnerships module at Edge Hill University. Cross-curricular planning is increasingly more common in schools. I think certainly since 2003 in excellence and enjoyment and the drive towards creativity with the website in 2005 and the Learning Outside the Classroom Manifesto, it's making it um, much more popular with schools. In fairness, I think it's always been there in some guise or other because it's the most natural way to teach. We understand that children naturally make links, so therefore a kind of artificial uh, division of subjects doesn't really make very much sense, and I think teachers appreciate that and have always appreciated that. Rachel goes to Edge Hill University, where Kate advises her about her plans for the cross-curricular scheme of work. So, Rachel, has the school given you an indication? Yes, they've given me plans from the QCA scheme of work. I've got the idea of farming right. and visiting a farm. That's a really nice one, you know, farming. It's a great topic to do for year two. It's something that the children can really get interested in. According to um, what the school would like to cover, is to look at different farms over the world, but more on how farms are different through the past, you know, past and present farming. That brings naturally out the history to it. And I can see you're looking at the physical and human features of the farm. So if we think in terms of the key questions that you mm -hmm. want to ask, what is a farm? What do farms do? Yes. What's the purpose of the farm? What type of work's done on the farm? Mm. would tie in quite nicely to. You could also look, thinking about sort of the wider issues that are going on, what about looking at, you know, some of the issues to do with farming and the way that farms have changed? Yes. It lends itself, doesn't it, to role play? Have you had any thoughts about I have actually play? had a conversation with the class teacher about doing some role play at the gallery. That's nice, isn't it? Because it actually makes it more interactive for mm. them when they're in the gallery. I've also got a... The painting we'll be concentrating on, and it is um, an image of an old-fashioned farm back in the 1930s. It's called Springtime in Estale by James McIntosh Patrick, and that's in the gallery. Well, that's a great picture. The key is two things. The first is to think about what do you want to get out of the gallery visit, and then the second part we can think about what can we actually do in the gallery 
that's really going to stimulate the children. And I'm quite happy to come on the visit if that would... That would be a fantastic help, yes. Well, that's yes. great. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to it as well now. Great. I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you very much, Kate, oh, for welcome. your help. You're welcome. I'll see you soon. Yes, I'll see you soon. Rachel puts her plans into practice when she takes the children on the trip to the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool. Right here too. I want you to make sure you can see this painting here. The painting is called Springtime Exhale and it's by a man called James McIntosh Patrick. It's a scene of a farm and the surrounding countryside. Now within that painting is typical farm animals and really I'd like the children to identify those animals in the painting and I'd like the children to identify with the feelings of the different characters in the painting and then that really brings in the curriculum link of PHSE, how to deal with emotions and how different pe people might be feeling and the link, the relationship between people and also how animals may feel. Painting, how many? After an introduction to the painting, Rachel splits the children into groups to carry out various activities. There was another little girl. Do we remember how many characters there were in the painting? How many, how many children and adults were there? Do we remember? Yeah. So we had ten people. So who were the people? Can we think of the first character we saw? What, what struck you when you first looked at the painting? There was a little boy uh, waving to his friends. Waving to his friends, you remember? And he was running waving. down the path. What should we call him? We'll give him a name. We need a name for that boy, I think. What? Well, Casey, you're good at names. That's a nice name, isn't it, Miss Price? I thought the gallery today was an excellent example of learning outside the classroom and cross-curricular planning because you saw Rachel taking ownership of that gallery visit. It wasn't something that had been given to her, it was something that she actually planned and developed and delivered in the um, gallery. Also, I thought you saw the responses of the children, that they were actually doing the geography, they were doing literacy, they were doing PHSE, and they were having a jolly good time. Fun was very evident, you know, with those children today. The children carry out some role play by taking on the characters of the figures in the painting. What I want you two to do now is to think very carefully what each of your characters will be feeling at this moment in time. And when I come and touch your head, you're going to be very still, you're going to be like the painting, and I'm going to touch your head and you're going to tell me how you're feeling and what you're doing there now. Are you ready? And who am I going to touch to come alive from the painting? It's going to be the washerwoman. Washerwoman, what are you doing on the floor? Washing. Washing, and what are you washing? The clothes. Clothes, and who's the clothes for? Um, the little boy. The little boy, is it all the little boys washing? Sleep, go back in the picture, and who's going to be next, who's going to be next? I think it's going to be Elliot, the little boy running down the path. Elliot, what are you doing running down that path? Um, waving. Waving? And who are you, who are you waving to? Your mum. Your mum? And is your mum saying bye to you? The opportunity to visit the Walker Art Gallery uh, really gave an, an innovative starting point for creative learning and cross-curricular approach to planning and that is something that I know Miss Price hasn't tried previously and, and again she said that's really inspired her as a teacher. I think to allow the children the opportunity to get out of school, see life beyond the walls of, of the school is invaluable. Rachel implements the second aspect of her plan at Farmer Ted's Farm in West Lancashire. Farmer Ted's is a working farm that also operates as an education centre for tourists, locals and school groups. I think it would be a fantastic opportunity to have that interaction with the farm animals and also it's a good way to introduce the children to where their food comes from. It doesn't come from supermarkets in the freezer. <laughs> Right then, good morning everybody. Good morning, dear. Fantastic. Now then, my name's Jill and I'm the Animal Bond Manager here at Farmer Ted's. So I'm going to be looking after you for today and we're going to be doing all lots of different activities. Now then, Farmer Ted's animals are all very, very friendly. They all have names and they like you to call them and they like you to stroke them. But it's very important that you don't put your fingers near their mouths. Now, can we wiggle our fingers? Chicken! 
Farmer Ted's has tailored its educational approach to teach the children what happens throughout the year and about animals, crops and buildings. During their trip, the children are given the chance to meet and interact with an assortment of farm animals. All right, can I have the first four children from this end, please? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Come on, take your brush from the box. He's just saying hello. There we go. All right, so who can tell me? Does a pony have toes? Do you know what they're called? Hooves, very good. Cross-curricular planning has proved to be a successful approach. Children very much respond to it. It's when you see them learning something, sometimes like mathematics, it can be addition, and they suddenly cotton on, oh, this is mathematics. But they didn't actually realise it because the nature of cross-curricular planning is that it's almost seamless sometimes, the divisions between the subjects. You can stroke any of the animals, but remember, what are these? Carrots! So what don't we do? Put our carrots in your mouth. So where do we stroke them? On the head of We believe that we provide an opportunity for trainees to have a valuable experience with us. We allow the opportunity for them to be real teachers uh, and we treat them as such. Rachel has obviously invested a lot of time and energy into the, the thought processes that have built up to, to, um, to the planning that she's undertaken along with the class teacher and they've worked very closely together to ensure that the, the cross-curricular planning addresses the, the key skills and allows the children those opportunities to develop the, the important and um, key objectives that are, are coming through. Where did they get the meat from? Animals. Animals on the farm? Yeah. I believe the impact of cross-curricular planning is that the teachers feel freer, they feel inspired, they want to engage with the learning objectives and ensure that they are effectively conveyed to the children, that the children can grasp those and run with them and ensure that they get an opportunity to learn about what they're interested in and to also reach beyond what could have been quite a restrictive curriculum. I'm so glad I've chosen this career path as it's ever-changing and I'm, I will be forever learning, which is fantastic. It's an exciting way to teach because it undoubtedly stimulates children. Children um, naturally respond to it and therefore teachers see the motivation in children. So if you stroke it just very gently down, these are called Rhode Island Reds. And the reason why Farmer Ted has them is because they're very good at laying eggs. Do we all like boiled eggs and soldiers? I think it's also, it empowers them and it gives them a sense of ownership and creativity in the curriculum. And we're asking them ever increasing to be more creative and to sort of move away from the tablets in stone that every single teacher is teaching exactly the same regardless. And I think that's what cross-curricular um, planning enables teachers to do.